How is it going, guys? Welcome to another Let's Talk slash Let's Rant. Uh, I believe the last time I did this, I was smoking weed. So, for the sake of keeping my bad health in check, we are going to drink this time. It's even worse than smoking weed. Uh, I don't really have a lot of alcohol around the house. But I do have truly. It's time to start drinking like a woman. I even wrote down a topic of things to get off my chest, front and back. List of list of topics. Mmm. These actually do taste pretty good, by the way. I got, so I actually picked out four flavors. So I got four. I'm, I'm going to drink four cans. I don't drink very often, you know. I, I only drink once every few months, actually. Um, and it takes, a, a, it takes quite a lot to get me intoxicated, you know, I, actually, I don't think I've ever been too drunk or high to the point where I lost my judgment. I've always had a buzz, but I never really got, like, so hammered that I couldn't think for myself, you know what I mean? <clears throat> Hopefully that doesn't change now. <sighs> Blueberry. The other three flavors are cherry, wild berry, which I'm guessing is like a cross between strawberry and raspberry, maybe, and uh, strawberry lime. <clears throat> I thought that was kiwi. I thought it was kiwi when I pulled it out of my fridge. So I don't drink too often. Uh, this is going to be a long let's talk, let's rant. This is probably going to be, uh, I, I would say an hour. I want to get the sad shit over with first, okay? I know a lot of you probably won't be too happy with me, but I got to do this for my own sake. I'm retiring at the end of the month, at the end of December. Next month. I'm retiring next month from YouTube. At least <clears throat> for a couple of years. Until I get my bearings. Until I sort myself out. You know. Um, and. I think a lot of you don't understand. <clears throat> is that. I'm. A one-person team. I don't have anyone helping me. I do my own writing. I do my own editing. I make my own thumbnails. <clears throat> I'm a really lonely guy, right? <clears throat> and I don't get any money from it. And I hardly really get anything back from it. I, I don't get anything back from it other than, you know, loyal followers, a few of you anyway, um, but I'm just tired of my channel not thriving. I put a lot of work into my videos and understandably, you know, there's probably a couple of reasons why. First off, my channel name sucks. The Gamer Gods fail. It goes over everyone's heads. They don't understand why I named it my channel. Even during the many, many, many times that I explained why it's called The Gamer Gods Fail, they just forget. It's not a catchy name. It's probably too self-depreciating. And nobody wants to subscribe to a channel that basically makes fun of itself. Which is what I'm all about. I'm all about making fun of myself. That's my, that's my kind of humor. I have self-deprecating humor. 
and you know I, I like poking fun at myself it's the best person you can make fun of is yourself and uh <clears throat> ooh, I'm already burping <clears throat> that's one thing alcohol does to me if it doesn't get me drunk it at least makes me burp because it's carbonated <laughs> I did hit 250,000 this year not subscribers views I've been doing this for 11 and a half years, and I've only got 250, a quarter million views. Not a quarter million subs. If it was a quarter million subs, I'd still be doing YouTube. Not quarter million views. So, yeah. I just, uh, I want to move on. You know, it's not that I don't like making videos anymore, although sometimes I do feel that way. Sometimes I feel fatigued, <clears throat> especially when it comes to making reviews. Because I, I put almost, I put like 95% of my hard work into my reviews. Like, that's where almost all my hard work goes into, is my reviews. And, um... It's just, uh, I mean, this was kind of a long time coming, you know. 2022 was actually going to be my last year. And I said so in my, my, my 2022 update, I think. <clears throat> the only reason why I stick, I stuck around one more year, and this isn't going to really mean anything to a lot of you, the only reason why I stuck through... 2023 is because of my siphon filter let's plays i got ocd and i wanted to like finish my let's play of all the games even though omega even though omega strain never came out they released all the other ones and i i wanted to do let's plays through them all and get that done and by the time <clears throat> my let my let's plays of those of that series was over it wasn't even like the first half of of the year, you know. I, I think I I think I finished it in like May, but I decided now yeah, might as well just stick around to the end of December, you know, make more funny videos. And I'm kind of glad I did because I feel like 2023, at least so far, is like my best year in terms of like the the best quality that I could possibly make given you know my my limited resources and my uh my not so great camera and mics and stuff I I feel like I did the best with what I'm given this year you know and I I'm proud of that in a way um but even if I continued into 2024 there's not a lot of things that I have in terms of ideas so I'd rather stop now on a on a high note than end up fading into crap later on. You know, I feel like now is a good time to stop. You know, my, my best year being my, my last year on YouTube, at least for a while. Because there's just so many things that I want to do in my personal life. And my YouTube, I feel like, has been... Holding me back, you know? I don't want to get into anything personal, like too personal, but... You know, I, I want to get a place of my own and, you know... Meet a nice girl, maybe, you know? Not that I really need one, but, you know, it'd be nice. Or at least have a roommate that I can split my rent with, right? You know, and find, like, a really good full-time job, you know, and just, um, have friends hang out with me, and, you know, I, I guess maybe I just, maybe I just want to move on, you know? I, I, I've made over 770 videos, and most of them I put a lot of hard work into, and I didn't even hit 400 subscribers. I'm nearing 400, but I didn't even hit that. And you need a thousand subscribers to get monetized. Which is another stupid thing I want to talk about. Okay? Because subscriber count hardly 
<laughs> hardly really gives you that many more views. I have a lot of videos that have more views than I do, I do subscribers. And then when you look at other channels that have way more subscribers than me, they sometimes only get a thousand views. So it's, it's disproportionate. You're not going to get the same views as subscribers. That's the harsh reality of it. You know, um, you're not going to, not all your subscribers are going to watch you. Some, some subscribers only subscribe because they saw one video that they really like and then they forget about you. You know what I mean? I feel like that's been the case with me. There have been a few times when my videos went semi-viral. You know, like my, my Dark Souls and Demon Souls videos, they, they got in like the five digit range. And stuff which is kind of which is really unusual for a channel that only has a few hundred subscribers or actually back then I, I had less than a hundred and I, I got like thousands and thousands of views even though I only had like a hundred subscribers at the time so I, I just find it weird how you need to have a thousand subscribers for you to, to get monetized maybe YouTube assumes that most channels under a thousand subscribers wouldn't get really that much money anyway so maybe they don't bother but i guarantee you that there are subscribers there are youtubers out there who have over a thousand subscribers who aren't getting anything i can fucking guarantee it so just make it available for everyone in case a video of theirs does go viral so they can actually make some lucky money out of it they got lucky Give them a little bit of money, you know what I mean? <clears throat> this video is already going to be like two hours long. I can feel it because I haven't even, I, I hardly even fucking touched this yet. And we're already like 12 minutes in. Fuck. Another reason why I feel discouraged from continuing to do YouTube is that when you have as few subscribers as I do... You can visibly see people unsubscribing. You know, sometimes I'll, you know, I'll wake up and I'll be like, oh, I lost another another subscriber. You know, it was like, it was at 387, now it's down to 386. And then, you know, a few weeks later, it's like, oh, I'm at 384? Like, what is going on? And I'm at, I think I'm at like 390 right now. Um... Which is the highest is it's ever been, but there have been a lot of times where my subscriber count goes down, and I'm just like, ugh. Because when you have a thousand subscribers, you don't really see individual sub counts dropping. You don't see them individually, you don't see them publicly, and seeing them like that in public is embarrassing. So, it's just, it's, I'm embarrassed, okay? I'm not, I'm not afraid to say that i'm fucking embarrassed i'm actually embarrassed about a lot of things that haven't happened yet in my life and and, and we'll stop it there okay we'll we'll stop it there maybe we won't if i get intoxicated and start getting all depressed and shit but for now we'll stop it there i wrote down sometimes um investing in something that gives me nothing back in return just sucks and it does you know, I've worked so hard for nothing, and, like, I can't tell you how shitty that feels. You know, it'd be like having a job and feeling very responsible for it and not getting paid. It's like slavery, almost, except you're your own slave, and you're like, why am I doing this to myself? <clears throat> and, um... Why am I doing this to myself, you know? I mean, I know I, I have a few people who really love me and love my content, but at the end of the day, I'm just like, why am I doing this? I mean, <clears throat> I understand that there are easier ways to make money, you know, in terms of, like, the video games. Like, I could make a, a, a Twitch account, maybe maybe do some Let's Plays on Twitch. I, th I hear that gives you easier revenue than on YouTube. Um, I could also start a Patreon account, um, make Let's Plays on Patreon and have my most loyal people. But would you really pay money to watch me play video games? Probably not, right? Because you got your own shit to deal with. 
that's what I understand that a lot of people don't. Like, we all have our own problems. We all have our own bills to pay. We all have our own shit to pay. I never ask money from anyone. I don't. Because I know what it's like to be that person. I... I don't ask money. I, I don't beg. Even if I were homeless, I would not beg. Because, you know, I it's, it's a hole that I... That I put myself in and it's a hole that I got to dig myself out of. <clears throat> so, you know, we all got problems and I don't, <laughs> I don't ask for money. Especially for something that isn't really worth donating to, you know. Like, you know, donate, donating to, like, a children's cancer hospital or ASPCA or something. Yeah, yeah, donate to the schemer so he can make money and play more games. Yeah, that's that's a very, that's a very admirable thing to do. Pay to watch the fucking Let's Play. Pay to watch people play video games. I don't know, man. I mean, like, I would like to get paid... But at the same time, I wouldn't want to receive charity from people who are as poor as me, if not maybe even poorer than me. It just doesn't seem right. I, I don't like that idea, you know? I, I wouldn't mind getting money from a big corporation like fucking YouTube, you know? So, yeah... I could make a Patreon, I could make a Twitch, but at this point I wasted a lot of time on YouTube and if not retire, at least take a very long break. I mean, we're talking two years minimum, maybe three. Um, I just, I, I don't want to sell out. <clears throat> That's another thing. I don't want to sell out and make myself feel like a tool for some sponsor, you know. Every... Everything that I've made is my own. I didn't, didn't make a penny off of anything, but everything I've made was my own. I never had people tell me what to say in my own videos. I just said it. I just said whatever I wanted to say in my own videos, and I always liked it that way. Sometimes in order to make money as an entertainer, you do need to be a sellout. And that, that kind of conflicts with my my philosophy as a content creator. Um, maybe that's why it never worked out. Maybe that's why my channel never really blossomed. Because I, I was afraid that I'd become fake. And, you know, I'd rather be a... Uh, a person true to myself with no money than some fake ass celebrity. And I'll die on that hill. Like, I'll die thinking that way too. If or when I do return, I might change my channel name to something better than the Gamer Gods Fail. Or if my fans don't like that, if you don't like that idea, maybe I'll make a new channel from scratch. And keep, I'll, I'll keep this old one, because I'm still proud of all the hard work I put into it. I'll keep this old channel up. I'll keep the, this channel up, and I'll just make a newer one in a couple of years. Or three years, you know. I'll start something different, or... Maybe more retro-inspired, kind of like how this channel originated. Playing, like, you know, le like separate Let's Plays of older games. Maybe do something like that again. Um, I haven't really thought it out as of right now. I just want to like finish my finish my last few videos of December. You know, like my Christmas video, my top ten best games video, and my highlights video, and just wrap everything up and take a very very long break at least. Going back to me not feeling motivated for making reviews is. There's something wrong with my jaw, and I don't know if I ever really spoke up about this in one of my videos, but my jaw, I, I have a lisp. It is pretty obvious, isn't it? And when you look at my mouth, 
my jaw shifts to one side whenever I say my S's. It, it, it like it kind of like kind of like Sylvester Stallone, except I'm he has a good reason as to why because his jaw I think one half of his jaw got paralyzed in childbirth or something. But I don't have that excuse, and I don't know what the fuck is going on. But sometimes my jaw it, it will it will shift. And, um, that is going to require some cosmetic surgery, having a lateral lisp to the point where people don't like hearing you speak, you don't like hearing yourself speak, and you don't like how the audio is coming up when you're editing your reviews and you got to take multiple takes, make sure you don't spit, and it's fucking annoying and I'm sick of it. I'm, I'm being blunt right now with myself and you guys, like, I hate the way I sound, you know? I hate how nasally I sound, you know, if I ever hit the lottery, I'm getting a fucking nose job done, so I don't sound congested 24-7, you know, so that, you know, get jaw surgery done, so that, you know, hopefully that will kind of eliminate my, my lateral lisp. Because I'm, I'm just sick of hearing myself. You know? And that, that really sucks. Like, I don't like talking to people either. Because of my, my speech problem. And I hate the stigma that people with speech impediments are somehow retarded. Or mentally impaired. Even though what goes on here has nothing to do with what goes on here. They're two different... Two different portions of the human head, okay? The brain is up here, your jaw's down here. It's got nothing to do with fucking brain impairments, alright? I'm talking to you guys, do I seem reasonably intelligent to you? It's because the problems that are going on with my jaw have nothing to do with the problems going on with my head. And that is a stigma that even my fucking elementary school thought was involved, you know, they, they thought that the two were connected, but they're not, like, I, I mean, I do have, I do have certain I, ISPs and stuff, you know, I am a little different, I am kind of on the autism spectrum, Asperger's, but it, it has nothing to do with my jaw, it has nothing to do with the misplacement of my jaw. Erp -a -derp. I'm sick of the fucking stigmas, you know. <clears throat> and I, I, I just want to forget about how people treated me in the past. And want to forget about how bad I sound in a mic, you know. And I, I don't really like making reviews anymore, even though they still do come out pretty good. Like that Robocop review... Which, by the way, I made a boo-boo in that review. Robocop Rogue City actually does take place after Robocop 2. There are some plot beats here and there that are relevant to Robocop 2. Uh, a, a, fellow, a fellow YouTube user pointed that out to me. Thank you, by the way. I've only seen Robocop 2 once, and I didn't really like it that much. So maybe that's why... I didn't really see that. I didn't really see the connection there. It's because I've, I've forgotten most of Robocop 2's premise. <clears throat> you know? And I've only seen a portion of Robocop 3. And that's like probably the worst piece of shit I've ever seen in my life. You know? I, I The only Robocop movie I really liked is Robocop 1. And I love Robocop 1. And so when I played Robocop Rogue City, all I really saw... Is what I remembered from Robocop 1. So, you know, in my defense, yeah, even though I should have done some more research and maybe paid a little bit more attention to, like, the game's lore and stuff and read more notes, I would have been able to piece together that it is a sequel to Robocop 2, but it mostly feels like a spiritual successor to Robocop 1. There are definitely more more influences from Robocop 1 in the game than 2. 
there are some references, like like the nuke drug, obviously, and uh, the, the last boss has the same metal chasey that Kane was in at the end of Robocop 2. So, you know, there are a couple connections, but it, it felt mostly like a Robocop 1 homage to me. And that's why when I was writing my review, it kind of went over my head. So yeah, Robocop Rogue City is a sequel to Robocop 2. I know that now. I didn't at the time, but thank you. Um, you know, it wouldn't hurt to, like, praise me for, like, the good things in my review, you know? I hate that. I hate, I hate it when people... Even though I like it when do, when people do give constructive criticism and, you know, they do point out, like, you know, bloopers or flubs in my videos because, it, you know, I, I'm i only human, right? I fuck up. I mess up. I'm sorry. Okay? I... I would appreciate it if... People were more, people applauded me a little bit more, instead of only pointing out the things that you do wrong. Like, come on, like, give me some compliments. Like, what, what are some of the things that I did right in my review? You know, did you think it was funny? Because that, that's like my, that's like my number one thing, is to, like, make people laugh. Is it at least funny? Did you at least laugh at it? You know? And that would make me feel better about myself. You know? And, um, I just... I think he did say that, like, me forgetting that it is a Robocop 2 sequel, I think he was like, that's the only thing you did wrong. So I guess in a way, you know, at the end of the day, he still loved my review and stuff. It's probably still very entertaining, but I don't know. I, I just, I, I guess maybe I'm a little too, uh, hard on myself whenever people give criticism maybe that's why I feel like I'm not getting complimented enough you know um so like whenever I look back on that review I'm like shit I, I, I should have rewritten it you know I, I should have pointed that out somehow but you can't really do anything about it you can I added I added it in in the uh the description that I made a mistake I think and it's also in the comments. But. Yeah. You know what's really popular on YouTube? Face cam. And I'm not a fan of it. I understand that, you know, the biggest YouTubers do face cam. You know, the biggest gaming YouTubers anyway. Like PewDiePie. And Markiplier. And Jacksepticeye. And, you know, Cinnamon Toast Ken, and I, I, I don't know, whatever whatever new YouTubers who just started a couple years ago, but I've blown up, and I don't know who you, any of you are, because I'm over the age of 30, and I'm now in the older, I'm, I'm now in the older generation of, of YouTube. So there's a, there's a lot of up-and-comers who are in their early 20s, and they're making millions of subscribers, and fucking billions of views, and here I am washed up I don't really care for face cam I don't care to do face cam I never really got into actually watching full let's plays that involve face cam because I feel like it detracts from what you're experiencing with the content creator you're mostly looking at his face his reaction to what he's playing rather than actually seeing what he's seeing you know and I just don't think that's very fun there are some exceptions like there is this one reaction channel I watch occasionally called blasphemous HD and he gets really scared around he gets really scared when he watches like you know horror movies or horror games or anything with jump scares and watching his reaction jumping out of his seat and shit is hilarious and I, I like that kind of reaction of like you know like people acting like hysterically you know compared to what's happening in, in the video they're watching like that is entertaining to me 
but just watching someone play a game, I'd rather just watch, watch them play, well, like watch them play rather than watch their reaction. I, you know, like one of my favorite Let's Play streamers doesn't do face cam. As a matter of fact, none of us have ever seen this face before. Tyrannicon. He only has like half a million subscribers or 600,000 subscribers, which is, by the way, more than what I could ever dream of having. But compared to like Markiplier and Jacksepticeye, that's nothing. And his views only generate like a couple thousand per video now. So you want to talk about guys with like big subscriber counts that hardly get any views? Like look at fucking Tyrannicon. He has a Patreon and plenty of people give him money for that. But yeah, he doesn't make a lot of money either. And to me, he's a superstar, so I I got no fucking hope, man. I got no hope for myself and ever making any amount of money on YouTube. And I feel like when we don't see his face, and wait, when he gets mad, it kind of like opens up the imagination. Like, wow, I wonder how I wonder how he really looks when he gets mad. I, I feel like I get more out of it, not seeing his reaction, but just hearing his reaction, hearing his anger. I feel like audible reactions are more effective in less plays than visible reactions. Um, yeah. I don't know. I, it could just be me. I'm probably in the minority. I, I gotta be in the minority, but that's just how I've always felt, you know. Once in a blue moon, I'll, I'll watch Markiplier play something funny, or, you know. But I, I never really laughed. I never laughed at Markiplier. He's a great guy, but I never really laughed at him. And I never really laughed at, you know, all those big-time celebrity YouTubers who just show off their pretty faces. And I don't really do that, you know. I'm not about that that kind of, of YouTube, so I, I can't really see myself doing that myself. It's been like this for a while, but I've grown so intolerant of how people treat each other on the internet. Yet when they're when you're in person they, they act like they're the nicest fucking bunch, you know? I guess I guess it's just keyboard warrior culture thinking that they can get away with Saying whatever they want to say behind, you know, behind a phone or a computer. And then acting like the nicest person in person so that they don't get punched in the face by me. <laughs> uh, I'm going to finish this blueberry and then I'll move on to cherry. <clears throat> Mm. Yeah, cowards. <laughs> They're cowards. I feel like most people on social media are cowards because they wouldn't dare say stupid shit or annoying shit in front of your face. Otherwise, they'd get fucking pummeled. You tell them to meet up, and then they don't meet up. Yeah. <laughs> Fucking bitches. <laughs> uh, we're actually nearing the bottom of this first list. I was kind of hoping that I would I would be like two and a half drinks in, but I'm not. Uh, if I could go back and change certain things, I would. Yes, I would. Better channel name. Stop myself from buying so many fucking games because I got a huge backlog of games. Wasting so much time gaming. Yeah. B 
being too obsessed with platinum trophies and 1,000 gamer score, yeah, it really doesn't contribute much to an impressive lifestyle, does it? If anything, it just shows you that you have no life. I got like 75 fucking platinum trophies on my PlayStation account. <clears throat> what a sad existence I've lived, guys. Uh, being more productive with my life. Yep, yeah, that too. And then I wrote down something that something that's actually somewhat inspiring to myself. I wrote down, but it's not too late. I can start doing that now, in 2024 and beyond. Yeah, and I, I, I am, but I have to step away from doing what I have been doing. You know, change, change requires sacrifice. Let me, let me tell you that right now and let, let that sit with you for a moment. Change requires sacrifice it requires stepping out of your comfort zone and it requires doing things that you've never even imagined doing before and i want to be that person for once in my life and i have to step away from what I've been doing. I feel like I've convinced a lot of you to believe that this is my calling when it probably isn't, or that this is who I am when sometimes it's not who I am. And I think I need to do more things for myself to prove that or, or at least to prove to myself that I have more to live for than just making videos so I'll probably have a trash trash bucket here in case I throw up or but yeah change requires sacrifice and in order for me to change in be more productive and get farther in life, I have to sacrifice the time that I've used these past 11 years just to play video games and make funny videos. I have to sacrifice that for a while, at least. A couple years, maybe three years, hopefully, no, hopefully nothing more than that. But I will go as long as it takes. So if it takes more than three years, it takes more than three years. Time is irrelevant to me. It, it, it's I, I got to do it. Try not to dwell on the past. You understand that there are things that you could have done better. But take that knowledge that you know now and make something better in the future. Yeah. It sounds like a pretty good payoff. It, it sounds like a good trade-off, you know. Yeah, you're letting go of some things, and, you know, people might stop following you, you might lose a few friends on the way, but I think that in the long run, you're, you know, it's it's worth it. Oh, I, I, I forgot, I, um, last month, well, not last month, I think it was, it was early November, I got a new car, it's a 2014 Nissan Rogue. And I got it because my Kia keeps being difficult. I put more and more money into it, and I still find new problems with it. And I decided that it's kind of a piece of trash, and I, I've i dumped it as my primary source of transportation, and I've moved on to a Nissan Rogue. It's kind of like a... Kind of like a minivan, but it, it it's more like a it's more like a small U uh, SUV. It's like a small SUV. Um, so it's got more space than my Kia Spectra, which is a sedan. 
So I'm going to get rid of my Kia pretty soon. I'm probably just going to end up giving it to someone who needs a car. Um, it keeps making this loud noise when you drive it like 15 minutes. Like after 15 minutes, it starts making this really loud noise and it stops when your foot is on the brake. Uh, so there's another problem that I don't know and honestly, I don't really want to know. And I just want it out of my fucking hair. <laughs> So, I got a new vehicle. I don't know if I'll ever get a chance to show you guys what it looks like. It's, uh, it's red, like my Kia. Um, you can just look it up online. Look up, uh, look, look up 2014 Nissan Rogue. It's got about 40,000 less miles on it than my Kia. It feels better to drive. You know, and, and I, I, I'm happy about that. I have no more money left, you know, so I won't be buying any more games for a, a long time between that and Black Friday set me back. It only sent me back a hundred bucks, but comparatively to like the 7,200 that I, I put on uh, the, the Nissan Rogue. Yeah, I got like no money left, <laughs> but I, I, I somehow, I feel happier about it. You know what I mean? <clears throat> Maybe I'll get like a thousand bucks from selling my Kia to someone. We'll see. And I, I also plan on uh, going back to work. I I did reapply at Duncan again, only because they do have a new manager, and uh, things. I, I've been hearing that things are getting better. That they're renovating the place, fixing it up better um and i also reapplied to dollar general and i'm 99 percent sure they've accepted me back they're just waiting for the the background check to clear but i'll be going back to dollar general um probably starting january i'm not sure but uh that'll be perfect timing because i plan on leaving youtube that time so i can devote more time to working and, um, yeah, I plan on going back to work, <clears throat> getting myself back on my feet, you know. And yeah. <sighs> I just one more swig. <laughs> How much percent of alcohol is this? 5% alcohol or volume? To be fair, I didn't really get high in my my last Let's Talk video. I tried, but I think I was just too upset to uh, really get high. I was just venting about work. <laughs> Benefits of baldness. I don't know why I wrote this down. Benefits of being bald, you know, it, it shit happens. You, it, it's genetics, right? Male pattern baldness is genetics. I got it. Most of my brothers have it, you know. I think my grandfather's had it. It runs in the family. What are some things that are good about being bald? Um, it's, e it's easier to shave because you, you got less hair to shave off to keep, to keep a shaved head. Um, you have almost no chance of getting lice because lice like living in hair. And, uh, I suppose you could still get lice on the side of your head, you know, that's, you know, not the top, but the side. If you have a horseshoe pattern like I do. No more bad hair days. When you wake up and you got giant curls in your head that you gotta, you gotta like try to keep it down or you even use hair gel. I remember when I was a kid, I used to get cowlicks all the time. I used to make myself look like I, I got like fucking devil horns, you know. 
it, it made my hair look curly when it wasn't really curly. It just and it, it made it it made it stick out worse, and I hated that about my hair. So I don't have to worry about that anymore. It's it it's gone. <laughs> And, uh, finally, no shampoo. Well, maybe, like, maybe if you still have dandruff like me, you get therapeutic, like, a tree shampoo. Uh, I forgot, I forgot exactly what it's called, but, more expensive shampoo, but, as long as you hydrate your head and keep it shaved, you're not going to have a lot of dandruff. I don't think, unless you have a medical condition. I do have seborrheic dermatitis, so I'm just speaking out of a good possibility that you guys don't have that. But I do personally have that problem. Um, but speaking for the masses of people who are bald, you don't really have to worry about using shampoo or conditioner at all, at all or much anymore. So, yeah, benefits of baldness. A very productive, a very important piece of this Let's Rant. The Let's Drink and... <coughs> let's Drink and Talk About Shit. Alright, I'm finally done talking about myself. Fucking 45 minutes into the fucking video. We're gonna talk about some something game related now. Like GTA 6, finally seeing the light of the day. I'm hoping it takes place in my Miami, or, you know, Vice City. Because it would only be fair that we have two mainline games that take place in Liberty City, 3 and 4. We have two mainline games that take place in San Andreas. GTA San Andreas and 5. And we should have a second Vice City game. Which should be GTA 6. Uh, I think they are planning on doing the first female protagonist. Which is pretty cool in my opinion. I wouldn't mind playing as like this, this kind of like this punk girl. With a bad attitude. and Who's like kind of like serial killery and people get in her way. But... Hopefully she has a good background, good background characterization, kind of like, you know, Nico Bellic or Arthur Morgan from Red Dead 2. Um, I do want to see a lot of 80s music. It's got to take place in like the late 80s, early 90s, like, you know, I would like to see Tommy, Tommy Versetti from Vice City make an appearance, even though... Ray Liotta, the guy, the actor who voiced him, died last year. Would still be nice to at least um, have some references to Tommy Versetti. Like I said, I want I want a lot of like '80s music in there, you know, um, on the radio, and maybe a couple like hip hop channels because you know rap and hip hop started kind of becoming a thing in like the late '80s. So, have, have a couple of those. Um, make the map a lot bigger than Vice City. I mean, of course they're going to do it, but if they're going to make a huge Miami Beach like they did the last time, at least put some stuff in it, because one of my chief complaints with Vice City was that I felt like half of the, uh, the right island was nothing but one big empty beach, and there's nothing to do on it. So, make better use of, of, of space. And if all that comes together, then, I, then I'll look forward to it. My hopes aren't too high because Rockstar recently has been kind of on a, a shitty list for me. Um, how they milked GTA Online and they keep remastering GTA 5. Only because they know it, it just makes more revenue. Um, I think the president of Take-Two was talking about the possibility of making games, making you pay games per hour. So, so 
so I'm confused by that. Is he gonna... Is it gonna cap out at 60 or 70 bucks? Or are we gonna keep paying more and more and more infinitely as long as we keep playing it? I wouldn't mind... You, you know, I wouldn't mind paying by the hour if it stops at a certain point. If I if I stop paying at a certain point. If I've, you know, played uh, a 35 hour long game for 70 and I don't have to pay any more. I can keep playing it and not pay anymore. But charging people per hour, that's kind of a scam. <laughs> You're scamming people. It kind of reminds me of like the old arcade games. You got to keep paying, paying by the life, you know. You, you want to continue or you got to pay more. Um, we're, we're better than that now. <laughs> we don't need to do that now. Like, isn't it enough that people are buying your game for 70 bucks? Um, so yeah, I'm not on board with that. Fuck that guy. I think he's in charge with all the shark card bullshit. In GTA Online. Because I fucking hate GTA Online. I'll have to be honest with you. I spent most of my summer. Most of my summer just playing GTA Online. And I didn't really like it anymore. You know. It's a bunch of fucking griefers. And people with annihilator flying machines. That just shoot everyone. And you know. It's just like very. It's very malicious. And very toxic. And I. It's not fun in the slightest. As a matter of fact, GTA Online might be the worst, the single worst gaming experience I've had all year. Which probably isn't saying much because I didn't really play any bad games this year. I only played bangers, you know. It's been a really good year for me personally for games. But I understand that there are, there are a few bad games that came out this year. But I was lucky enough not to play them. I've been playing some Dead Island 2 lately and i'm i'm fairly far into it i think i'm like level 17 or level 18 i just i just played through the the venice beach area i'm not sure if that's like halfway or whatever but i do like it more than any other dead island game i think it's okay though <coughs> only okay because the gameplay isn't really that deep. And uh, the story is still kind of trash. And the writing is still kind of bad. and But it is less frustrating than the other Dead Island games. The enemies are less annoying. They replaced the infected that used to just like fucking charge at you. And slap you with karate. And make Billy Corgan smashing pumpkin sounds. <laughs> Nineteen seventy nine. <laughs> they don't sound like that anymore. There, there are there are these runner types, but like they they run after you, but then they kind of stop and like hit you, and then they just kind of like make erratic movements, and it gives you better windows to strike, you know, as opposed to. The original runner infected. They used to be like, ah! like, <laughs> ah, shit. But yeah, um, Dead Island, Dead Island Two is fine. I think the biggest appeal that the game has is the um, the gore system. <laughs> And how, how did, did they put a lot of work into just like the anatomy of the zombies and the gore and the the effects that your swings have. And, you know, like, like hitting a zombie in the face will take their jaw off and their tongues will dangle out of their heads and smashing a zombie in the head with enough force will cause their eyeballs to pop out and just dangle there like a like a really violent family guy skit you know it's like really comically over the top and uh it's funny and it is entertaining and it does make killing zombies satisfying in a way 
But that's kind of the only thing the game really has going for it is the gore and the guts and being able to cut zombies in half with katanas and shit. And then of course you got the the gun customization at the workbench. You can add fire and electricity and all that cool stuff. And I mean I, I'm overall having a a good enough time with it, but still not really a really bought on it, you know, but it is less frustrating for me than the other Dead Island games. Um, so yeah, Dead Island 2, I mean, so far I'd probably give it like a 7. It might drop down to like a 6 later on. Um, it's pretty easy. As a matter of fact, it's too easy, and dying doesn't really have any penalties. You just come back and that same zombie will ki that killed you will have the same health bar that it last had when you when you hurt it, you know, and it, you can just like you can just like die your way through the game basically. And um the only times where it, where it's hard is when it's too hard. When you come across like a really overleveled zombie that just kills you in one hit. So it's either way too easy and then there are small portions of it that are way too hard. It's not really a it's not really a well balanced game. The there's no balance in difficulty. <laughs> it's either too easy or too hard. Um But at least it doesn't really at least so far for me, maybe there's a couple of zombies later on that are annoying. I think the most annoying zombie so far that I've come across is the um the fat, bloated zombies that spit acid at you. But that's nothing compared to what I faced in the earlier games. Um, so far, it's just been somewhat entertaining, at least. I don't hate it, but I don't really like it a lot either, you know. It's kind of a middle ground, but it is the best Dead Island game. It's just still not very good. <laughs> I hate Dead Island, okay? Like, Dead Island, Dead Island 1 sucked. Riptide was worse. And I do want to get Escape Dead Island back, even though that's like one of the worst games ever. Only because I just want to go back and finish it once and for all. You know? And then just never think about it again. Because of said OCD. But Dead Island 2 is at least tolerable and somewhat entertaining, so, yeah. Um, I also recently played through the Horizon Forbidden West DLC, which was pretty much more of the same Horizon Forbidden West. It was, uh, it carried both the things I liked and hated about the base game. Really wasn't much to it. If you don't plan on 100%ing it, it's not really worth the 20 bucks. It was pretty short, but if you want to do every side mission and activity and stuff, it's worth the 20 bucks, I guess. Only if you're a fan of Horizon, which I'm getting a little tired of. I don't really like open world games anymore. I find that most of them are just kind of like a big old waste of time, you know, going from point A to point B and just having the game expect you to do everything it wants you to do and it's it open open world games for me have become like an obligation you know um I th the horizon dlc that would probably give like a seven for me as well same as forbidden west i honestly thought zero dawn was better better story and better polish i haven't really been excited about a lot of games in general simply because of the obligation, the level of obligation that I have to finish a lot of games, and I, I maybe that maybe partly is because of the fact that, that I bought too many games, and so it's become kind of work for me to just push through them. I bought a lot of games that I didn't really personally want to play as much as people telling them, 
pe- people telling me how good they are and be like, okay, I'll give it a shot, and I never do, I never do, you know. But open world games, especially, I think the best one I played recently was like Elden Ring, which did win my game of the year back in last year. But even that, you know, there were a couple times when I'm like, uh, okay, I've already done this. What do we do now? Do I take on this dungeon? Do I take on that mini boss? Um, I've been playing a little bit of Zelda Tears of the Kingdom. Same thing. Really good game, by the way. I really love all the in, all the added uh, innovative, you know, gameplay mechanics they they added in there that weren't in Breath of the Wild. It's it's really good, but I'm just not digging the whole open world anymore. You know, it just become redundant and repetitive and. I'm just not really for open world games anymore, and uh, that's I feel like that's what most games have become, at least most big games. I know there are exceptions here and there, but I just haven't really felt excited about many games, knowing that it's going to take me ages to push through them, you know? And that, that's time, that's time that I don't really want to give to video games anymore, you know, I got, I got better things to do, you know, like, I'm, I'm not a kid anymore, like, I got shit to do, man, like, at least you could do is give me a short and sweet game, and respecting my time as an adult, um, but, I don't know, that's just me, I understand that there, there's always going to be a market for open world games, but, I'm starting to lose interest in them, you know. Um, I kind of miss what games used to be. No updates. No microtransactions. Very simple online. Uh, unlockable things rather than DLC. Like unlockable levels or costumes or weapons or whatever i miss that and uh, i think gaming has become so greedy where they just you know why why bother unlocking them with your you know with your effort and skill and just buy them all instead and fucking conquer the online world just because you happen to have the money to blow on all this shit you know and i I will never be one of those people, you know. I just miss the days when you could put in a game, like say PS2, put in a game, put in a memory card, and that's it. You don't have to worry about downloading the game to the console or memory card. You don't have to worry about installing the latest updates so that it runs better. You know, you don't have to worry about any of that. I just miss that. I just, I miss the simplicity of what games once were, console games at least, and I just miss that, I also miss wired controllers, what the fuck, guys, was having wires really that much of a deal breaker back in the day, they save you from having to buy another controller when the lithium battery runs out or you, you know having to like take apart the fucking controller and replace the lithium battery with another lithium battery that probably costs the same amount as a fucking controller anyway so you may just want to just like dump the controller for a new one and like really are, are cables that big of a deal of all the times i grew up playing video games not once it was my biggest concern about the cable going from my console to my hands. Like, it, it was never a big deal for me. Bring back wired controllers as an option, at least. Like, actual built-in wired controllers in, like, the, 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 con- the controller. You know? They, they, got, they got charging wires now, but it's not really the same, because you still got to charge your controller with the wire. You know, like, I, every time I tried going back to PS3 and getting one of my old PS3 controllers to work, no good. You know, because my PS3 controllers are getting old and 
half the time they can't even stay on because their batteries are dying out. I, 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 I'm looking, I'm looking to get a wired controller for my PS3. And, you know, they're, they're pretty hard to come by because they're, they're limited, you know? Um, and sometimes even like charging cables don't seem to work anymore. And it, it's just, I, I, I miss the days of wired controllers, you know, I, I just, it added to the simplicity once again, you know, once again, gaming's become more complicated and much more of a waiting game with the updates and, you know, much more with the, the inconvenience and it's just complicated and more expensive. Like, uh, I've been playing Baldur's Gate 3 on PS5. Fucking phenomenal game, right? Amazing game. Game of the year, even. But I'm at this point, uh, Act 3, where the game just suddenly stalls. And I know it's not a hardware issue, because if it was, my PS5 wouldn't have gotten that far in the game. It's a software issue, not a hardware issue, you know? And maybe it's because Act 3 of Baldur's Gate 3 has all those NPCs running around the city, and maybe my console can't really keep up with that, so maybe it isn't well optimized for PS5. But now I have to wait... I gotta wait to actually finish the game. I could I could start another playthrough. And I know that playthrough is gonna be vastly different because the game is fucking amazing. It's phenomenal. And there's so many different options to do, so many different quest lines and, and, and just the very dynamic world that, that the one action can cause different events and stuff. And I'll probably end up playing it again anyway, you know, just because I fucking love it. And um but Act 3 needs to be patched, and until it does, I gotta wait. You know, I gotta wait until I actually beat the game, you know, and it's just bullshit. Like, they should have just had it on private servers and just tested it out on their own time private servers before releasing the game. And, um, at least on PS5, it's probably perfect on PC. High-end PC, anyway. I don't know. I'm, I'm a console gamer. I don't play... PC games, you know, and my PC is all about me editing my videos and uploading them, and that's it. I've always been a console gamer at heart, even though nowadays it is preferred to play on PC, but, ah, I don't know. It's too late for me now. <laughs> but, yeah, I, I just, I, I miss when games used to be complete, and if they came out buggy, Back then, they were considered bad games forever, like like E.T. on the the 2600, the Atari 2600, or Superman on the Nintendo 64. You know, Drake of the 99 Dragons on the original Xbox. It came out bad. It was bad forever. But I I would have I'd, I'd like that. I'd like that because it made game developers more caring about their work, so that they didn't have to exploit. The ability to update video to, to update video games while still collecting your money, you know, I I miss the discipline of game developers back in the day, um, and that's part of the reason why I sometimes think about giving up on games now because I I, I just no matter how good a game is, it could be a masterpiece like like Baldur's Gate three and still still run into problems. You know, and that's depressing. You know, the the best game, even the best games now have problems, like like technical problems. And yeah, bring back wired controllers and bring back disciplined game developers. <laughs> have you guys ever seen Parks and Recreation before? You know, Ron Swanson, um. His, his mother and his ex-wife uh, play a drinking game to see which one takes him home. And, you know, his ex-wife is like a very manipulated person. And his mother is like very doting and, you know, territorial and right-wing. And and he, he just says he's had enough. And he takes this whole jug of like pure moonshine. It's like the most powerful alcohol in the world. 
and just fucking chugs it all down. And then he's like, boom. <laughs> he's like, Mom, you're going back to the farm. And you, Tammy, you're going back to hell. <laughs> well, that's one of my favorite shows, Parks and Recreation. It's a good show. You should watch it sometime if you don't. Um, I'm on my third can now. This is Wildberry. Uh, but, you know, I have hundreds of games. I still have hundreds of games that I do plan on getting through. Some are going to be great. You know, I'm sure some of the are going to be great. Like Disco Elysium, I'll probably have a fucking hell of a time. I have a feeling that may end up being like one of my all-time favorite games. Disco Elysium. And then I have games that I'm probably not going to like. That's going to be a slog to get through. Like Death Stranding. You know, I might not. I, I probably just fucking hate that because it's the epitome of open world, right? So... You know, while I'm away from YouTube, even though I won't be active on YouTube, you know, on my free time, I'm still going to play games. Some games I'm going to love, some games I'm going to hate, but I do got to get them all done so I can get my money's worth out of having them for years. Ugh, I think I'm starting to feel the effect here, guys. Ugh. <coughs> Ugh. Shit. Oh, shit. <sighs> uh, I won't stop, though. I'm gonna drink. I'm gonna drink until I pass out in my video. And I've only had two cans. Come on, Darren. You, you've done this. I've, I've had far worse alcohol in my body. And I've handled it far better. <clears throat> Come on, Darian. You've only had two trulies. What are you, a girl? Ugh. Uh, yeah, that'll be my my free time these next couple of years. Is uh, trimming my backlog of games. Uh, in between work and, you know, improving myself and hanging out with people. I really should stop planning things. Like, maybe that's why I haven't been doing well in life. is because I've been planning too much in a world where you can't really count on plans. You know, shit just happens all the time. And you can't really... Things that are, like, out of your control, you know? Maybe I should just stop planning and just go with the flow and see what happens. I might end up dead, or I could end up the richest man alive. Who knows? <laughs> I'm moving on to like the last four things or last five things on my my piece of paper to talk about. Um, the Game Awards, or should I say the Game Advertisements. Because <laughs> oh, at least half of the award show is just showing upcoming games. Uh, the Game Awards announced their nominees uh, a little while back, like two weeks ago. And I think their their ceremony is next Thursday, I believe. December 7th. <clears throat> and um, I'm going to go ahead and predict the winners. I'm not going to, I'm not going to say what, what. Where would my personal picks be? Because that would that would be kind of spoiling my top ten best games of the year. I'm not gonna I'm not gonna give my personal takes, but I will predict the games that will win. Okay, here we go. For game of the year, actually game of the year, best game direction, best RPG, and maybe best narrative and community support. I think are all going. To Baldur's Gate 3. I think Baldur's Gate 3 has the best chance of sweeping the award ceremony. And well, I know I just said I, I wouldn't weigh in my personal opinion. But 
I will say that I would understand why it won, because I have played it, even though I haven't beaten yet, but I've played most of it, and I understand. <laughs> I'm not sure if it's going to win my personal game of the year. It probably will. It probably won't. But I understand, and in all fairness, on the PC version anyway, it probably does, it probably does deserve it the most. So yeah, that wins most of them. Uh, best action game. Here's what's confusing about me. They don't have, they don't have a category for best shooter. They have one for best action game. And then they have another category that's best action adventure. Like action slash adventure. I'm like, so what's the difference? Like, shouldn't the action category become like best shooter? Since they don't have a best shooter category. And there's plenty of shooters coming out. Like, I don't get it. But I'll play along, okay? For best action game, I think it's going to go to Hi-Fi Rush. And if it doesn't go to Hi-Fi Rush, my second prediction would be Armored Core 6. But that is the only nomination that Armored Core 6 has. And that doesn't happen often, where they give... A game with one sole nomination that won award. It doesn't happen very often. And Hi-Fi Rush has quite a few nominations. It doesn't have a Game of the Year nomination, but it does have like four or five nominations. And I think it can take Best Action Game. I haven't played it yet. Well, I, I won't be able to play it until I get like a Series X, but haven't played it, but I hear great things. And I think it might win Best Action Game. Best action adventure, I predict, is going to go to Zelda Tears of the Kingdom. I think that has the best chance. Simply because it's Zelda. I think Super Mario uh, Wonder will win best family game. Best platformer. Um, I'm not sure what's going to win best art direction. Maybe Lies of P. Something something different. I know Zelda and Mario are both on Best Art Direction. Baldur's Gate 3, surprisingly, isn't. Um, and I, I forgot what the other two nominations are, so I might predict Liza P. Um, maybe. Or Hi-Fi Rush again. Uh, yeah, I think Hi-Fi Rush is nominated. That, that might win that. Category 2. But I'm I'm kind of veering towards Liza P. Um, for best audio, it's got to be either of the two remakes. It's got to be either Dead Space Remake or Resident Evil 4 Remake. Or Alan Wake. Alan Wake 2 actually tied Baldur's Gate 3 for best, uh, for, for most awards. So... They might give one for Alan Wake 2, and it, it might be best sound. I haven't played it. Again, I heard great things, but yeah, maybe, maybe Alan Wake 2 will take best audio. Or it could be one of the remakes. For best music, I think that belongs to Final Fantasy 16. Out of, out of the... Out of the nominees for Best Music, I think Final Fantasy XVI has the best chance of winning. Uh, for Best Voice Performance, that's a tough one. It's a tough one because I've I've only played Final Fantasy XVI and Baldur's Gate III, so I only know how good two of the performances are. Ben Starr as Clive and... Um, the guy at that that one guy as um Asterion, the vampire. And between the two Maybe Asterion. Maybe maybe Baldur's Gate 3 will get six awards. Maybe it'll win best best performance too. Uh but Ben Star did a really really amazing job as uh as Clive Rossfield in Final Fantasy sixteen, so maybe him too. I know the guy from Star Wars Jedi Survivor is nominated. Um, Idris Elba is nominated for Cyberpunk, the Cyberpunk DLC. And uh, somebody else. Uh, I'll have to look at it, but... 
I that, that that is one category that I really do not know. It's anyone's guess. And um huh. I don't know any anything about the esports or the e coaches or shit. I really don't care about any of that shit. I think it's funny how one of the coaches they nominated this year didn't even do any coaching this year in esports. He's like, why the fuck am I nominated? <laughs> It'd be funny if he wins too. Like people like people actually like vote for him like just to troll the, the game awards and how stupid they are. I kind of hope he wins as best coach, just to see his fucking reaction. That's, that, that'd, be, that'd be some funny shit right there. <laughs> I didn't even coach this year. <laughs> It'd be funny if, he, if he's like there in person and he accepts the award. He's like, why'd you give it to me? I didn't do shit. <laughs> uh what what no what what other category am I missing? See, I, I think I'm drunk right now. I'm drunk right now, but I'm still thinking straight for the most part. I think, um, wow, what did I miss? Um, best narrative. Best, best narrative, yeah. Uh, I think I said Baldur's Gate 3 might win it, but it could also be Alan Wake 2. Final Fantasy 16, maybe, if the judges can get past all the F-bombs in it. It's kind of, uh, just distracting, but, uh, I, I might actually go towards Baldur's Gate 3, you know, the, 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 the storytelling is, like, phenomenal, and, like, how, how in-depth the whole world is, and how many lines of dial, it, it's insane. Um... Best multiplayer. Oh, best fighting game. Best fighting game and best accessibility. Those two, I think Street Fighter VI has it in the bag for those two. Street Fighter VI is also nominated for best multiplayer game. But I don't think it's going to win best multiplayer. Um, just because it's a one-on-one -on -one fighting game. I know they, they've recently finally unlock the uh the tournaments which i haven't tried yet but best multiplayer i know diablo 4 is nominated baldur's gate 3 is nominated for the for best multiplayer just because of the you know the multiplayer the co-op aspect and so is mario wonder but between those i might i'm i'm actually thinking diablo 4 even though I am aware that they ruined that game. Kind of like how B the Blizzard ruins everything these days. They ruined it with a uh, with a patch. And they haven't really recovered from it. Uh, again, I haven't played it for myself. I'm probably going to wait until I see it for like 20 bucks a few years from now. But yeah, I hear, Ball, there's, uh, I hear Diablo 4 isn't doing very well. But it might, it might still win Best Multiplayer. Uh, best ongoing game. Fortnite's always going to be on there. Uh, but there's also Final Fantasy XIV online. There is, um, Genshin Impact. Uh, hmm. I think Cyberpunk is nominated in that category only because it's been taking them years to just, like, update and fix that whole fucking game. So maybe that could win best ongoing game. <laughs> Like if it's finally like a really great game, because it was not it was not a great game when it came out, but um you know three years later, it's probably a really good game now. So that might win best ongoing game. And uh, well, if I'm missing a couple other 
nominees, I'm sorry. But, you know, like I said, I think Baldur's Gate 3 is going to be the one that wins it big. You know? Oh, I think the girl from Ellen Wake 2 is nominated for Best Performance, but I can't really... I don't know. For some reason, I don't really predict her winning as much. Anyway, yeah, those are my predictions for the Game Awards. Uh, for the announcements, I am expecting to see um, Final Fantasy VII Rebirth, which comes out in February. Um, I really don't know. Maybe, uh, maybe like Dragon's Dogma 2. Maybe I'm just pointing out games that I personally want to see. Games that I'm excited for. Uh, maybe they should show a GTA 6 teaser or an Elder Scrolls 6 teaser. I don't know. Um, <clears throat> there's really... There's really not a lot of games I'm personally looking forward to. Like, I'm, I am excited for Final Fantasy VII Rebirth. I am still, I, I still have that uh, Alone in the Dark remake pre-ordered on PlayStation. I'll play that in January, you know, um, at my own leisure, of course. Free time in between work. And I, there's not really a lot, like, the, um, Dragon's Dogma 2, I'm excited for, only because I like the first Dragon's Dogma game, and it doesn't look too great. It looks like... Dragon's Dogma 1.5, but I'm okay with that, you know. And, uh, that's about it. I, I really haven't been that excited for, like, a lot of new games, you know. If Capcom announces a Code Veronica remake, though, I'm gonna water at the fucking mouth, okay? It was, a bad, it was bad enough they skipped it in favor of RE4 remake. So hopefully Code Veronica Remake will be the next remake they do. Um, <clears throat> uh, other than that, um, there's not really much else. Uh, there's one more thing I want to talk about. Speaking of RE4 Remake and all the Capcom remakes that they've been doing. It has come to my attention that a lot of people don't think that Game of the Year should go to remakes. And I disagree. I think that if a remake is good enough, like if a remake is amazing and it has new gameplay elements to it, if it's a complete overhaul to the original formula, if the story is retold, preferably better told, with, with different voice actors, different game script, new areas to the map, and so much more, graphical overhauls, whatever, it should be at least more eligible than certain games that come out with the same reused assets as previous games. Take Ubisoft, for example. Far Cry has been exactly the same since Far Cry 3. Assassin's Creed has been the same formula, well, since the very fucking beginning. Different gameplay, you know, you know, different gameplay beats here and there. You know, the new ones are more rpg -ish, But Ubisoft has been guilty of reusing the same concepts in their open-world designs, the same ideas, to the point where, despite being original releases, their games are asset flips from their previous games. And... Take Call of Duty, for example. Let's face it, it's been the same fucking thing for a while now, okay? It's been the same goddamn formula since, like, Call of Duty 4 back in 2007. With the same multiplayer, I mean, that 
it's even worse now because of the whole microtransactions and the loot boxes and the fucking battle passes and fucking bullshit like that. But you're telling me that those games are more eligible for Game of the Year, which Modern Warfare 3, by the way, I hear is a real fucking piece of shit. You're telling me that's more eligible for Game of the Year than a Resident Evil remake made from the ground up with zero bugs, perfect polished gameplay, perfect structure, there's nothing really wrong with it. There's no predatory microtransactions. There is no <laughs> gameplay interruptions. There's no lag. It is such a well made, well designed game, well put together, that just because it's a remake, it doesn't deserve game of the year on that that alone. Now, it'd be one thing if you said that I don't I don't think RE4 deserves Game of the Year because I wasn't really a big fan of it, because I thought it was disappointing compared to the original RE4. That's a whole other narrative, right? That's a whole other reason to not think that Resident Evil 4 deserves Game of the Year. But it's a whole other story when you're just saying, you're only saying it doesn't deserve Game of the Year just because it's a remake makes no sense to me. How is it any less original than games that have reused assets and recycled content anyway? How is it any worse? How is it any less just because it's a remake? But it's a remake from the ground up. It's not a remaster. It's a remake. Different voice actors. Different lines of dialogue. A slightly retold story. Some different areas here and there. Maybe they cut out some parts that they thought they were that that, that were unnecessary. Or they maybe they padded some things out to make it longer than it should be, you know? Because not every not every remake is a good remake. Like take RE3 remake, for example, where they cut way too much content out. And that does not that did not deserve Game of the Year in the slightest. But then you have RE2 remake. Which is funny. It's funny because no one seemed to bitch and whine when that was winning so many fucking awards back in 2019. It won like 80 Game of the Year awards in 2019. No one seemed to have a fuss about that winning Game of the Year. And maybe, to be fair, it's a remake of a game that was in more need of a remake than RE4 remake, because the original RE4 still holds up. The original RE2, eh, fixed camera angles and stuff like that. So, maybe people liked RE2 remake, maybe they were more impressed by RE2 remake than RE4 remake. Fair enough, right? Fair enough. But, they're all remakes. So, by by not having a problem with RE2 winning Game of the Year, but having a problem with RE4 winning a Game of the Year just because it's a remake, just makes you nothing but a fucking hypocrite. When he had no problem with RE2 winning Game of the Year. Which kind of leads me... It, it leads me to backtrack to when RE4 came out. RE4 remake came out. And there was this whole bunch of people who were review bombing it and they were review bombing it because you couldn't you couldn't look up Ashley's skirt anymore so these same people the same people who are fucking perverts who criticized the game for Ashley not wearing a skirt anymore are probably the same people who are saying that remakes don't deserve game of the year because it doesn't add up to me you know Resident Evil 4 Remake is a phenomenal game. I'm not necessarily thinking it it deserves Game of the Year. But it is by far one of the best games of the year. <laughs> and it should at least be nominated for Game of the Year. Which it was at the Game Awards. Even though it was only nominated for three, I think. It was, it was Game of the Year, 
best action adventure and best audio. And, uh, didn't get a best game direction nomination, surprisingly. I thought I was going to get a, going to get a best game direction nomination, but oh well. Here is another perspective. Let's pretend that only two games came out this year. That it was such a bad year for gaming. Like, let's pretend that there was a big video game crash. And only two games made it out to release. Resident Evil 4 Remake. And Lord of the Rings Gollum. Which do you think deserves Game of the Year between the two? A remake? Or an original game? An original game, mind you. Oh, apparently that, that's a big a big deal breaker for something. If, if, it's not, if it's not a remake, it doesn't deserve Game of the Year. Okay. What if every other game that came out was a pile of shit? What then? You gonna give Game of the Year to a pile of shit? Rather than a well-constructed, well-designed remake? Really? Really? Wow, you're very smart. I'm fucking drunk right now. I've had three fucking goddamn beers. And I'm calling you out for your fucking stupidity. And I'm looking you dead in the fucking eyes. Really? You're gonna give Game of the Year to Starfield. A game that, like I said, has reused assets, reused, you know, lines of code that they used in Fallout, that they used in Elder Scrolls. The same outdated shit, the same outdated systems that are no less original than a remake with used concepts, mind you, yes, but new mechanics that were, that were revisioned from the ground up. You really think that Starfield is a better game even than Resident Evil 4 Remake? I... I doubt it. I I haven't played Starfield and I really doubt that it's as good as Final Fantasy 4... I mean not Final Fantasy. Resident Evil 4 Remake. I really doubt that. I really fucking do. I... I can bet my ass that Starfield has bugs, that it has kind of like a boring open planetary exploration with, you know, with dumbass NPCs and, you know, choices that don't really matter. And I, I predict that because that's kind of what Bethesda does. Maybe I'm wrong, but, you know... Just because something is a remake doesn't mean that it doesn't deserve best game of the year. You know, if it was an, if it's an amazing game, like a, a perfect 10, it should be a, a contender or front runner for game of the year. If it does something better than all the games put together, even though it's a remake, it Who's to, who, who's to stop it? Who's to stop it from being game of the year? And maybe it's all subjective at the end. It is all subjective at the end of the day, but... Fucking let... Just let RE4 get nominated. I don't understand. Maybe there's some ulterior motive, like... Being too perverted that... Ashley not having a fucking skirt bothers you. Grow up. Just fucking grow up. Okay, that rant is done. As a matter of fact, I, I think I'm going to end it there just because I've been... I'm starting to feel the effects of alcohol and... I'm starting to kind of wind down and, uh... Well, I'll, I'll leave this nearly two hour long rant with, uh... Well, these Trulies, they... They tend to make my breath smell like onions, and I don't know why. And it even kind of has like an oniony aftertaste, and I don't know why. I'm not saying I don't like onions, but I don't like drinking stuff that, that gives me an onion aftertaste. I'd still take this over any fucking beer with hops and, and shit, but...
it, it's hard seltzer. It's kind of like, it's kind of like flavored vodka, except it's, it's not as strong as vodka. But I just get this really oniony taste, like, in my throat. And I feel like when I breathe that out, I can kind of smell, I can smell my breath coming from my throat. And it smells like onions, like rotting onions. And it's gross. That's the only thing I don't like about these Trulies. The aftertaste and the after smell. It's like, it, I don't know. I don't get it. Also, when people get their pictures taken, why is it that they're always told to say cheese? Does saying cheese make you smile? It doesn't make me smile. Look, I'll even prove it to you. Say cheese. 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 You don't say cheese like cheese. You're like, hey, can I have some cheese? Cheese. Cheese, 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 cheese. Ugh. Fuck. Oh, fuck. The Gamer Gods! They are! Hello, son. It's me, your dad. <gasps> and I'm making a special family photo album with this new R2-D phone. <laughs> Say cheese. Oh, you want me to say cheese, Dad? Okay, I'll say cheese. Cheese! Oh. I'll just switch off for a while. Oh my god. <laughs>